Good morning, good morning everybody and very well welcome. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this early morning for this event on breaking down barriers around the use of SDRs to support Africa's sustainable development. This event is being live streamed and that's why we're having this in this opening ceremony room, this beautiful offering ceremony room. So the 650, and the 650 billion special drawing rights allocation by the IMF has provided significant resources to IMF member countries at a time of great need. The SDR allocation was made in proportion to countries' IMF quota. Basically, the allocation was made inversely to the needs of African countries. The 54 countries of Africa receive $33.5 billion in new reserve assets, while the seven countries that form the G7 received more than $275 billion. And concerned voices across the world have been calling for more resources to Africa, more resources to developing economies. And the African Development Bank has been one of these leading voices and has been working in very close collaborations with the Inter-American Development Bank and other partners for channeling SDRs through the multilateral development bank system. The value proposition supports a highly compelling rationale where the MDBs can significantly leverage the impact of the SDRs three to four times. To put it in picture, $50 billion of SDRs allocated to MDBs is $150 billion to $200 billion of SDR that these institutions can invest to build back greener and better and also address global inequities and development challenges. So we have designed a hybrid capital structure at the African Development Bank that will allow rich countries to lend SDRs to MDBs that we can account for as equity. We leverage that equity, we will leverage that equity by borrowing from capital markets at affordable pricing thanks to our AAA rating. And also this is going to contribute to reducing significantly the debt burdens of our member countries. And this, ladies and gentlemen, at zero cost to developed countries' taxpayers. So an allocation of SDRs to the African Development Banks and to multilateral development banks will amplify the impact of the SDR issuance and allocation by the IMF and have a critical and powerful development impact. And this should not be ignored. So while the work continues, we call for your collective support for this unparalleled opportunity for more financing for Africa. I thank you for your kind attention and would like to welcome the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Adeshina. Thank you very much, uh, Asatu, and thank you for what you do every single day. Good morning, everybody, honorable ministers, governors, guests, and those that are watching us by live streaming. As the world confronted with the COVID-19, was confronted with the COVID-19, with its global effects on all parts of the world, posting the worst economic recession since World War II, Developing countries could not cope with the financial challenges posed by the pandemic. With a liquidity crisis and balance of payment difficulties, the global economy simply tanked. Debt increased, and in the case of Africa, debt to GDP ratio skyrocketed north of 70%. The US Secretary for the Treasury, Janet Yellen, took that bold decision to make a big call. It is time to think big to mitigate the impacts of the pandemic on the global economy. 
especially to expand liquidity and fiscal space for developing countries which were being disproportionately affected. The International Monetary Fund, under the leadership of my dear sister, Kristalina Georgieva, took the bold decision to issue the largest SDRs in its history at $650 billion. However, Africa received just $33 billion of the SDRs. The African Development Bank looks forward to working in partnership strategically with the IMF on the special drawing rights. Our goal is simple. Use the SDRs to accelerate Africa's development. Africa can accelerate its development and cope with other challenges such as climate change, debt, insecurity, and the effects of the Russian war in Ukraine on the economies if we better leverage the special drawing rights of the International Monetary Fund. Africa needs to have a reallocation of $100 billion from developed economies as agreed by African heads of state and also as agreed at the conference of financing African economies that was hosted by President Emmanuel Macron of France. The African Union has called for a reallocation of this $100 billion of SDRs to Africa, with a portion of it going through the African Development Bank as a prescribed holder of SDRs. We should use the SDRs in more pragmatic ways to support economies. Providing the SDRs also through the multilateral developing banks has several benefits. First, the multilateral developing banks can leverage the SDRs, and you heard it from ASATU. At the African Development Bank, we can leverage those SDRs by a factor of four times. So whether it is $20 billion, that is $80 billion. Whichever way you look at it, for leverage, we are a leveraging machine. That's what the MDBs are. We are leveraging machines. Second, the SDRs can be absorbed by the bank as equity, which will expand our lending capacity to countries. Third, the SDRs that is leveraged will be used to provide additional capital and financing for the development banks all across Africa as part of our financing in common in cooperation with the French government and other partners. The SDRs can also be provided as concessional loans to the African Development Fund, and we are in the 16th replenishment of the African Development Fund. So that's a great opportunity to be creative and innovative in how the SDRs are used for that. But there are some challenges in receiving SDRs by the multilateral development banks. There are specific challenges, especially for the European Central Bank, given the article that prohibits monetary policy financing outside of the EU zone. In addition, for countries that wish to reallocate their SDRs, they need to be assured that the SDRs so provided will preserve their reserve asset nature and that they can always be cashed back, requiring that they be given assurances of high liquidity nature and credit quality. The African Development Bank is in discussions with the IMF on approaches that address these issues. We at the African Development Bank believe that the SDRs to multilateral development bank rechanneling, such as the African Development Bank, will also strengthen the global financial architecture. It will foster greater complementarity between the IMF and the multilateral development banks. 
the IMF will focus on macroeconomic and fiscal stabilization, its area of comparative advantage, while the multilateral developing banks will focus on sectoral programs and sectoral policies. That's our bread and butter. That's what we do every single day. They will be able to ensure that the SDRs deliver impactful results on the ground. The multilateral development banks, in addition, will also work closely with the IMF on its poverty reduction and growth trust, the PRGT, and the newly established Residence and Sustainability Trust. Excellences, governors, ladies and gentlemen, as I close, let me say, providing these SDRs, also the multilateral development banks, will be game changers for accelerated development of countries. And in fact, since the SDRs always go into central banks, it's not obvious that actually it impacts directly on the lives of people on the ground. So we actually think that we could be quite creative and call the SDRs supporting development revitalization SDR. That way, people on the streets, they will feel the effects of SDRs on their lives. That will be transformative for Africa, and I sure hope we can make it happen. Thank you very much and welcome. Good morning to all of you. Uh, after this uh, very eloquent and uh, mobilizing speech on the uh, use of uh, SDRs, uh, I am going to um, tell you how we go going to organize this uh, session. Uh, the panel, we have some very distinguished uh, panelists. Uh, I think I'm, I'm here as a moderator. Um, you know, I have a background as a central banker, as an IMF official, so I suppose this is why I'm here. And I've been exposed to the SDR during, in my life, perhaps even more than I would have wanted. Uh, and so I'm going to, but I'm very um, convinced that uh, today is, is a day when things can really change in, in, in that regard. So I'm going to say a few words really to set the stage for, for the, the panel. I will bring the panelists. They will have five minutes to, sp to speak. Um, there will be interactions and questions as much as we can, but I will have to conclude on time. Uh, indeed, as uh, the President uh, and Asset who said as well, you know, the, the ASIA allocation has been unequal. The countries with excess reserves have realized it and have pledged to rechannel those ASIAs. Two initiatives have been taken so far through the IMF, as you know, the PRGT and the RST. But this uh, third route goes through MDBs and especially those MDBs that are prescribed orders of SDR. So this looks quite natural. Now, this route is a bit longer, is a bit more torturous in a way, and one reason is the need to ensure that the recycling of the SDR through the MDBs do not lead them, those SDRs, to lose their status of a reserve asset, as the President Dezina said. It partly depends on, of course, on how one defines a reserve asset, and, and we are pretty confident that a AAA prescribed order of SDRs like the African Development Bank actually can safely meet this uh, criteria. Now, against this background, it must be said that the needs for SDR deployment have only expanded uh, since the decision to allocate those SDRs, and it's especially true, of course, in Africa, as the President said today and also, of course, yesterday in the introduction. So the objective of this panel is to hear the panelists uh, on the merits of this third way, on uh, the special needs uh, that it could meet for Africa, and also on how to move forward so, because Africa really cannot wait. So with me uh, this morning, and I'm going to call them to the stage, I'm very honored to have the Honorable Minister of Finance of Ghana, Mr. Ken Ofori Atta, the Honorable Minister of Economy, Planning and International Cooperation of Senegal, uh, Mr. Amadou Ott, 
the Honorable Minister uh, of, the, uh, uh, of Finance of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Mr. Nicola Kazadi, uh, the Minister of, uh, of, um, uh, for Africa, Latin America, and the Caribs of the United Kingdom, Mrs. Vicky Ford, and the President of the Trading Development Bank Group, Mr. Admasu Tadis. So I, I welcome you to, to the stage. Excellent. We, so I'm really going to, to start with the um, Honorable Minister of Finance of, of Ghana, and, and, and I will then give the floor to uh, the, uh, the Minister of, for Africa, Latin America, and Caribbean, Caribbean, Mrs. Uh, uh, Ford, uh, in terms of order, so that we, we can blend the, uh, also have a, a mixed participation uh, in, uh, in this, this panel. Um, Mr. Uh, Oforik, Attack. Can, I, can I ask you to, first to, to give your perspective on, on this question of the SDR allocation reaching through the MDBs, uh, the merits of that, uh, how you, the, the needs for that as well, and again also your thought about how can we move forward so in a way so that we don't have an, another panel in, in a year on the same issue but we have really allocated the SDRs to Africa. Great. Um, thank you very much and good morning and welcome um, colleagues on the panel. Uh, I think we should really sort of put this into context um, and therefore solicit a sense of a, um, enlightened self-interest globally and therefore why we are doing that. Uh, the fact of the matter is that by 2050, uh, Africa will be a quarter of the world's population. That's a fact. Uh, at that point, too, we'll have about 850 million youth. That's also a fact. Um, so the question then becomes, how do we prepare for that inevitability? And what it is that we, as leadership at this point in history, understand our common humanity and also appreciate what we experienced during the COVID to now really question um, the fit for purposefulness of the current global architecture. So is that then the basis for which we go forward with something that we put together since 1943? And that's really a fundamental question um, to get the myopia out of it. Um, then we come to the needs, um, which as we know, with regards to SDGs, um, um, it's been calculated that we need some 285 billion um, with regards to infrastructure, about 130 billion each year going forward. With regards to health, 666 billion. Um, getting back what we lost because of COVID, another 485 billion. Climate action, 3 trillion. So obviously, Africa must move from the billions from to the trillions. That's also a fact. Um, how do we then um, move forward to be able to effect that? You know, fortunately, um, it is quite clear that the issue of a multilateral development entities such as the AFDB, you know, are prescribed holders of this. Now, what are the instruments around? So we have SDRs through multilateral, now, if we go to um, the private sector, um, you realize that over $200 trillion are being managed one way or the other. And we have our own constraints between rating agencies, et cetera, which give them certain covenants, uh, which then do not enable them to, to disperse, reallocate, invest in our region. So we need to tackle that aspect of it. Now the SDRs are in front of us, 650 billion in which um, African entities were also um, very um, forward in the way in which we lobbied. And fortunately with the change in government, it enabled that to come. Um, people say that the allocations are unfair. I don't think that's a reason. I mean, there was a basis for that formulation and that's okay. The question now is how do we now work with these entities for that to be reallocated in a way in which we solve these looming 
uh, problems that, that will come. And I think that's really where we are. And I, I, in my mind, I do not see how we cannot do it if we put our minds to it. Uh, I remember Gordon Brown changing the whole issue of SDRs at the point when he was um, chair of the development committee. Uh, you had the Brady intervention, you had Baker interventions. Um, so clearly, it's an issue of people understanding our common humanity and saying, how do we solve this problem? And if SDRs are going to be one of the vehicles to do that, uh, then by golly, you know, let's sit down and talk about it and get it done. Uh, because these are essentially rules that we have put in there, uh, the rules, you know, now going to constrain us uh, for a more productive society that we are looking to have. And that's the challenge. How do we then find friends? I think the articulation of how AFDB, for example, can use this money, you know, we don't need to go through that. Um, we don't need to go through that as much as we have. I think the president has articulated really well, uh, and we know that it will be more effective going through them. Um, our challenge then is who are the X number of countries that we have to meet with um, to see how we can convince them or look at ways in which in looking at their rules and laws, even including the ECB, um, how best uh, we, can, we can move forward. Um, so I, I think I just want to lay down that principle and the uh, fierce urgency uh, for us to look at it once we realize what will happen if we don't begin to tackle the problem effectively and immediately and with urgency, especially with the elevator debt uh, that we see, which compounds all of these needs um, that I have articulated uh, from the beginning. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Minister. This is um, a very good introduction. You're bringing the, the perspective on, 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 this, uh, on this discussion and, and indeed um, the, the need to, to move forward in, in a uh, convincing way. Um, I'd like perhaps to turn to, uh, to the Minister, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Vicky Ford. Um, so the, the, the UK has taken a leadership on, on, on many uh, of those issues and in a way is not part of the Eurozone, so it's not constrained or shackled by some uh, rules uh, or you know, some rules or theological rules. Um, so we'd be very interested to, to get your view, your perspective on, on this whole matter uh, uh, viewed from London. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And can I just say how delighted I am to be here. The African Development Bank is a very close partner and friend of the United Kingdom. Uh, we're very proud to currently be the largest donor to the African Development Fund and we've recently offered to purchase additional shares to increase our own shareholding in the bank. <coughs> Thank you. Um, so last week we launched our new international development strategy uh, in London and the UK is focusing its development efforts on four key priorities, educating girls, mobilizing women, for example, I'm sorry, mobilizing investment. We women no, need mobilizing, but we also need the mobilizing of investment. Uh, for example, in infrastructure, uh, responding to humanitarian crises and addressing global challenges such as climate. And in all of those areas, the bank is a very important partner. Um, across Africa, countries are continuing to grapple with the effects of the pandemic and the impacts of climate change. Uh, they're now faced with the impacts of Russia's war on Ukraine, and that war is undermining food security and threatening to reverse hard-won development gains. So there are huge challenges, and we need to work together to find new and innovative ways to support African countries. Last year, when the United Kingdom was president of the G7, we championed the largest ever global allocation of IMF SDRs, which we're discussing this morning. It's worth $650 billion. And that was to support countries to respond to the pandemic. And then last July, when the G7 leaders came to the UK, to Carbis Bay and Cornwall, they also agreed a global ambition to channel 
$100 billion of these new SDRs towards low-income and vulnerable countries. And in October, when the G20 leaders came together, they agreed to the same level of ambition. Uh, last October, the UK committed to channel 20% of our new SDRs, that's $4 billion, to support vulnerable countries. So we continue to call on other advanced economies that have not yet committed to channel part of their new SDR allocation to do so. So we've committed a billion of those SDRs into the IMF Poverty Reduction and Growth Trust. That's offering concessional finance to eligible lower income countries, including to 39 African countries. Last month, um, at the spring meetings in Washington, the Chancellor also announced that the UK will aim to channel two and a half billion SDRs into the newly created IMF Resilience and Sustainability Trust. That trust will provide affordable long-term financing to low-income countries and vulnerable middle-income countries to address challenges such as climate change, energy security, and pandemic preparedness. And then on top of all of that, as agreed by the G20 finance ministers last year, the UK has been actively exploring the possibility of channeling some SDRs through the multilateral development banks, including the African Development Bank. And so, let me be very clear, the UK would like to channel some of our SDRs through the African Development Bank. Um, we really welcome the bank's efforts to develop options for these SDRs, and we'll continue to have many discussions, I know, in the margins of this week's meetings. But for the options to be viable, we and other partners need to design mechanisms that meet our legal requirements for maintaining the reserve asset status of SDRs. Um, and we also want to ensure that they have the largest possible impact on the bank's lending capacity, that leverage that the president just mentioned. And now this is where it gets complicated because to meet the legal requirements, we can't challenge, channel those SDRs into the African Development Bank by ourselves. We need a group of countries to come and do so together. So we in the UK are obviously encouraging other developed countries to join us on that journey. Uh, we would really strongly urge you, all of you, and uh, all the people listening in this room and online to encourage other countries to do so. Um, uh, President Adesina mentioned the restrictions on the ECB, uh, which uh, currently make it hard for some Eurozone countries. Now, I spent a lot of time in the European Parliament, okay, so I'm going to go off script a bit. So I've seen how the European Parliament can take a long time sometimes to make decisions through the European organizations. But I've also seen that sometimes when they want to act in a targeted way, they can do so quite quickly. So um, I hope they're looking at ways that they may be able to do something quite quickly. It, it is complicated, and I, I do understand that. Um, but because of these legal hurdles and challenges, <coughs> I really do urge the bank to continue to explore other innovative ways to mobilize finance. Um, just over an hour, uh, President Adesina and I signed the Room to Run Guarantee. This commitment from the United Kingdom will unlock $2 billion of additional financing from the bank. Uh, that will happen over the next four years. It's been a very expensive morning for me, and it's only half past nine. Um, but it's been a great honor from the UK to make that mechanism work, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that guarantee from us through this bank turn into transformational products in many uh, projects across many African countries. So, wonderful day. Um, the bank also has a very critical role to play in mobilizing private investment. Uh, in Glasgow at COP26, the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero, uh, which compromises more than 
comprises, not compromises, comprises more than 450 member firms representing more than $130 trillion of assets under management. They committed to reaching net zero emissions by 2050. And the bank should be supporting, and I, I trust will be supporting, African countries to take advantage of these commitments by developing green capital markets and creating new structures to unlock that massive private sector investment at scale. So just to close, I would really like to commend President Adesina for his leadership uh, and for all that the work that the, that the bank is doing to continue to innovate and to reiterate that the UK stands alongside African countries as we seek to respond to the challenges of the pandemic the effects of climate change and the impacts of Russia's war in Ukraine. Thank you. Many, many thanks. I think this is um, indeed perhaps a costly morning for you, but this is for us. This is really a, a pleasure to, to hear that and the leadership indeed on this issue. There are also two, two issues that you, you made, two, two points that you made, which are important for the rest of the discussion of the panel. The first one is the fact that there is a multiplicity of tools. This is a, although uh, the African Development Bank uh, supports, uh, and very rightly, this avenue, there are other tools, such as the one that you mentioned, of course, that can help expand support to, to Africa. And so, so that's not one at the expense of the other. This is a one instrument along with uh, others. And related to that, also this, and, and this is the President Adesina made a reference to that. This is a connection with the IMF, the fact that the African Development Bank is not going to do the same thing as uh, the IMF. This is a complementary uh, action, certainly in the context of the creation, in the wake of the creation of the RST, which uh, creates some room for, for the discussion. So, so those, are, those are themes that you mentioned, which I believe would be important for, for our panel as well. If you don't mind, I, I, I'd like to, to, to move to the uh, uh, Honorable Minister of Economy, Planning and International Cooperation of Senegal, Monsieur uh, Amadou Ott. Uh, Est-ce que vous voulez prendre la parole? Il faut parler très peu. Non, non, non. Thank you uh, very much, actually, for uh, this, uh, this actually panel. I would like to commend President Adishina and the team for this great initiative and really, really appreciate the efforts, the partnership of the UK government with the African Development Bank. They need another round of applause, please. <laughs> and I would like also to really commend Minister Ford and the UK global team for their flexibility and for the sense of innovation. You know, I've been uh, interacting a lot with the UK government, in particular with one of your instruments, the UKF, for example. And what I found out was that you guys are always open to new ideas. You want to think about it, you want to look at this. You're not going to say, no, we are not used to doing this, therefore we're not going to look at this. And this is absolutely important it's of a paramount importance if we would like to really mobilize more capital for Africa. Africa needs to accelerate its development, as President Adeshina said. We cannot do small things every year and take 100 years to do something that we should do in 10 years' time. Because at this current pace, we'll be here in 30 years' time talking about the same things. We need to front load the investments. We need to accelerate Africa's development. And the means are there, the resources are there, and the world has showed it. The world showed that to us during COVID. More than $20 trillion was mobilized just like this. $20 trillion. Why? Because the world faced a major challenge Everybody got together. The political will was there because it was going to affect us today and we find the solution. So if there is a will, there will be always a, a way, I think. <laughs> and with the allocation of SDRs, we've shown that 
there is almost a zero cost instrument to develop to developed countries to help developing countries remember the sdrs is the last is the reserves of last resort before the uk or the us or the european countries touch the sdrs who are reserved i think the world will have to be completely upside down those reserves will never be used we can say that we know that because all these countries are exporting massively their currency is used globally therefore the likelihood of touching the sdrs is almost zero which means then those sdrs can be given to someone else who is in need without never expecting to call them back basically you'll never have the chance to call back those SDRs and use them as, as reserves. Therefore, there is a unique opportunity here to channel those SDRs towards Africa and help us accelerate our development. We understand PRGT, its, its priority is good, RST is excellent, but there is no leverage in it. You give one dollar, you get only one dollar. Whereas here, you give one dollar, you get four dollars to the countries that need this the most. So this is the difference. So two things. With the money given to the IMF, is it possible to structure something with the African Development Bank so that we can have that leverage? Or can we say that the countries will give their SDRs to a specific purpose, which is to convert into uh, uh, providing the African Development Bank what they need so that the leverage factor is there. We believe that the countries can do it without any issues. Now we need to move into action. How? We have already the UK. Let's target five, six, ten other countries and have a game plan, have a team, like an investment banking team when you are selling a transaction, you have a team and you go meet your uh, investors, you pitch them. Let's use all the political backing that we can have. Uh, President Macky Sall was chairing the AU this year until February next year. I'm sure he will be thrilled to be part of this. He's already actually advocating the SDRs to African Development Bank in his last speech in Senegal, he mentioned that, and I'm sure he'll support. President uh, Nana Kufudo also can be a champion, especially he's chairing the committee that handles the financial mechanism at the, at the AU. I'm willing myself also to commit time to this, and I'm sure Ken will do the same, and some other ministers. Let's call on our counterparts, and maybe even call a summit, a small summit, a few heads of states, President Macron, Prime Minister of Canada, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, of course, will be uh, leading this effort. And for them to give their commitments and then direct their finance ministers and central banks to work on it. Typically, treasury officials, central bankers are very conservative. It's normal. It's their job. But the politics have to direct them. Guys, we want, ladies, we want to do this uh, find a solution, don't come with theory, with uh, we can do this, this can't work, blah, blah, blah. We want results. I think if we get that, I'm sure we can get in a room with the help of Lazar and everybody will come up with a solution. I think from this meeting, we need to have an action plan. Now everybody knows the benefits of using SDRs into MDBs, in particular with African Development Bank. Let's now move into action, knowing that what the IMF will propose, typically it will be budget supports, policy financing. Here what we are talking about mostly will be project financing to identify our needs and have the African Development Bank that has the experience, the expertise, the know-how to prepare, appraise, wonderful project, impactful project, and do it on a fast track basis, and let's move ahead, time for action, 
and we are ready, Adeshina, to work with you and Vicky and everybody to get this done. Thank you very much. Um, many thanks, Minister. This is uh, indeed a lot of energy and, uh, and indeed the, the, sort of the focus on, on action and moving forward is very... Uh, another point, very important point that you made analytically is, is in fact on the reserve asset status. We're not going to enter into a uh, uh, complex uh, discussion about that, but you, you made a very good point. I mean, over the last 20 years, the central banks have expanded massively their foreign reserves. And uh, it is difficult for, to, to, to argue that any of them, or some of them actually are completely immune to liquidity risk or balance of payment problems. So, so the allocation of a very minor part of the, their FX reserves to, this, to a AAA institution, by the way, uh, would, would, uh, should not be a massive uh, issue. Um, so those are, those are a very uh, convincing point, I, I, I suppose. The, I'd like to, to give the floor uh, now to the uh, Honorable Minister of Finance of the uh, Democratic Republic of, uh, of Congo, uh, Monsieur Nicolas Kazadi. Uh, je vous donne la parole, Monsieur le Ministre. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, first of all, I would like uh, to commend the UK for this uh, leadership in showing the way. And I hope that uh, this will be followed by others. Uh, and again, I would like to say that I, I remain op optimistic in this issue because I know where we come from. I remember when we decided to, uh, on the $650 billion, uh, it was not easy. Uh, and again, uh, when we, it was to move, to give one, an additional $100 billion to Africa, it was not easy at all. All the last past year was a discussion with President Macron in the front to ensure that Africa will get the 100 billion. And until now, it's not completed already, but I think that we are coming there. So I remain op optimistic, and I'm sure that we will make it. Uh, what I see is that uh, from uh, Glenegal to now, all the commitment made by the international committee, uh, community has never been achieved uh, for different reasons. Uh, but now we have a unique opportunity with this SDR to make a difference. And it is so important because there's not, it's not only a matter of development or, or, or poverty reduction, but it is a matter of climate challenges. And if we don't make it for Africa, we are all lost. So it's important now to consider that we have no choice. We have to, bring, to achieve the commitment that we have been uh, making uh, for so long. And now we have, as you said, the first institution which knows about development for Africa. There is absolutely no reason for not giving them the means to achieve their goals for the African Development Again. So we are, we are okay with the PRGT, and it has been helpful. We are very okay with RST, but it, of course, what the crisis has shown, either uh, COVID or uh, Ukraine, it is that is Af if Africa uh, is left behind, it is because of structural issues of development, and that can be solved only by development practitioners. So it means that we have no way. We have to give the money where it should be. Uh, I'm all, as I said, we can, uh, PRGT okay, RST okay, but if we don't have that leverage capacity with the development bank, I think we will not make it. And if another crisis comes, it, it may be worse. So I think uh, uh, now it's a matter of working, as uh, my colleague has just said. Uh, we have to work, and uh, I'm sure that at the early beginning of this issue, President Macky Sall was one of the first to advocate for that, and now that he's chairing the AU, I think we will make some progress uh, in the coming weeks. Thank you. Um, merci beaucoup. Um... Mr. Minister, um, you, you're making a point which is, or has been made as well, but which may perhaps facilitate the, uh, um, the deal, in a way, on the SDR rechanneling, is, is to also identify a, a cause, a, a mission, which is about climate. So we, we are seeing such a massive mobilization of funds 
uh, in the private sector, but also in the public sector on those. Uh, so, so perhaps targeting that and doing the leverage, 100 gives 400 green or blue, uh, may make a difference as well. So this is something we may want to to mention at some point if we have a few minutes left for the discussion. I'd like to, to turn now, and this is very interesting because uh, we have had a, a panel of, uh, of, of, of African countries, also of, uh, of course, countries from north, a bit like me, um, coming from the UK, and, and there is also the, the, another partner in the group, which is, uh, in fact, the, the Trade and Development Bank. And, and one of the reasons why, uh, Mr. Tadesi, you were, you were invited as well, is that there is a community, a brotherhood of uh, institutions, or development institutions in, in Africa, and, and the African Development Bank was eager to, to have you because there may be ramifications, also spillovers, uh, trickle down of, of these SDRs if they are allocated to, to Africa. So I, I'll give you the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pierre, and uh, very pleased to be on the panel. Uh, just to, to build on the conversation that's just been happening, I think as a second-tier African MDB, uh, we've also, of course, been trying to, to speed up our response to the challenges. Of course, the gaps have been very apparent since 2015 when the SDGs emerged, but since then there have been a number of factors that have come in that have aggravated those gaps. And it's always been very clear that there's just need for several intermediaries to get the impact down to the ground as, as quickly as possible because we know that there are bottlenecks, we know that there's an intermediation constraint. Oftentimes you hear of many financial institutions having a great deal of funding, but that funding not managing to be dispersed in good time. And that is why we exist as tier two uh, African MDBs. And, and it's, I think, in that context that the African Development Bank has played a very strong role in strengthening the various channels and the intermediaries in the continent to get to the last mile countries, to get to the SMEs, to get to the trade transactions that require uh, obviously more, more, more players on the ground. In fact, if many of us uh, reflect back to 2015 when the SDGs uh, were first promulgated and approved at the global level, it was very clear that there needed to be an expansion of numbers of players to get the speed, to get the traction with all the scaling that's been discussed. We've all been talking about scaling up. I think Ken talked about the new financial architecture that's been building up with consensus from the Finance and Common Summit. There's been so many different global discussions that have been happening that have brought us to a very refreshing point in the development finance discourse. But there's a number of very important characteristics that really need continued fostering. And I think uh, you know, Minister Ford has talked about innovation. Innovation we know is very important because there's so many different ways of, of getting smarter impact. And innovation, of course, has a number of faces and we're delighted now to see you know, innovation coming in at the IMF level with the SDRs as has been discussed. But I think that innovation needs to embrace the very important concept of speed, speed of delivery, right? Speed of delivery is about intermediation. We need many channels. You cannot have one channel if you really want to reach this one billion plus people on the African continent. And this is why we are very, very excited as TDB to see the growing, the growing conversation to ensure that there'll be multiple solutions to the challenges by having you know, different role players doing their, their rightful part. Uh, we, we have been embracing the principle of blending as well because that's another very important characteristic in addition to innovation. And, and, and you know, in the context of climate finance, we know how important blending is. Uh, preparing projects for financing is, is not easy. And, and I think there is a growing understanding that there needs to be much more heavy lifting upstream in the process of implementation. Getting things done requires a lot of preparation. Again, that is a, a very difficult area in finance because you need fit-for-purpose funding that can help unlock those opportunities. And, and this is where you actually help the private sector also come in because the private sector relies very heavily on MDBs, those who are closer to the ground, to actually do the architecture at the deal level. You know, there's so much that needs to be done. And, and there is understanding. This is not a new discussion, but I think it's about what we as bankers always say, close the deal, 
because there's a lot of talk that happens, but there's not enough of closing of the deals. Many thanks uh, for that. And this is indeed, speed is, uh, is an extremely important uh, thing. Now, now to, 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 in fact, we could be very sure, I think that this Minister Hot said that, but the, uh, when we look at what happened during COVID and what, what is happening in, in the world, in a way, uh, based on, on, on the, tragic, uh, the tragedy in, in Ukraine, we see a the speed is there, actually, in terms of uh, mobilization. So, so the, 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 the issue is really to make sure that uh, people understand, perhaps outside uh, Africa, but that they understand that the priority and urgency is here as well. Minister. Just quickly to say that what we are trying to do here with this, this SDR, this transaction, is almost like what we are trying to do with ADF. You take ADF to market, you leverage, you lend more to low-income countries. You take SDR to market instead of giving one one-to-one. -one. Then you give more to non-ADF countries. What we want is to move more ADF countries into the bank window, right? The more you invest into those ADF countries, the faster they will leave ADF, move into ADB, where you have the SDR to market. So the fewer countries we have in ADF, the more impactful also the ADF to market will have on the countries in Africa. Therefore, you accelerate the development of Africa. ADF to market, SDRs to market, and it's a win-win scenario. For African countries going to capital market, doing euro bonds, no matter what cost you will pay on the SDR to market, you're much better off than going to the capital market directly. So the bank does it for you at a much lesser cost. So it's a win-win for Africa, win-win for development part partners. So let's do it and let's do it fast. Many, many thanks. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, I don't really, I mean, what we have here is an issue of um, the world sitting down um, to find a solution to something that we know we must do something about. In the same way in which the urgency of the Marshall Plan occurred after the war. And we are in a situation of a war. And I think my colleagues have really, um, really identified where we should go. Amadou is talking about action now. Colleague here is talking about speed. And that is where we have. I think really, uh, Mr. President, uh, maybe we should do something like an Accra Declaration, uh, which will then really make it clear what we are talking about today, you know where we'll bring it to the Board of Governors, um, you know, during this week, uh, in which we identify um, a methodology to go to the market, to lobby the five to 10 odd countries, get um, President Akufuado um, to sign on to something, so that we leave Accra by Friday with a clear agenda on what it is that the governors have ratified, the host country has supported, and then we put in the mechanism um, for the type of um, lobbying that is required. Will be the way. Yeah. Our, our very, very good initiative. The, the Serment d'Accra. Uh, perhaps very really the last word because you know I've been asked to really finish on that. But Minister uh, Ford. Yes, thank you so much. The last word for you. I just wanted to come in about this point about action and speed. Okay truly unprecedented times um, and these pressures that we have, you know, climate change, pandemic, and now Russia's attack in Ukraine and those impacts. So, um, first of all, the UK has been working through the World Bank to get rapid action to help especially the world's poorest countries to cope with the rising costs of fuel, fuel, fuel and food because of the Russian war. 
Um, that resulted last month in announcing a $170 billion package of financing to come out of the World Bank. We're one of the biggest shareholders there. It's obviously been a number of partners coming around. But we're really encouraging that money to be sent out rapidly and sent out towards food security in the world's poorest countries. Um, so it's important that the African Development Bank continues to work with other international partners to make that happen. But that is an unprecedented part. That's good. And then just picking up on what the Honourable Minister said about making sure you're focused on where your action goes. The, the room to run guarantee is exciting um, because currently the African Development Bank has been capital constrained. It lent about $6 billion last year. Our guarantee, which goes in with the African Trade Insurance Agency, unlocks another two billion of financing. And it's particularly targeted towards green infrastructure for the such a need. So it comes out of our promise to invest in climate fund, our promise to help with mitigation and adaptation in a very targeted way. And, and, and it doesn't try and create something that's completely new because it's going to use the fact that the bank knows how to lend money. We're just getting that capital capacity in a clever way. So I would love to see more countries using that sort of a tool. Many, many thanks. Uh, so we are over time, but with you we can score some goals in over time. So that's good. Uh, many thanks for your uh, contribution. There was a lot of energy, positive energy, I think. And so uh, I hope we won't have a panel like that in uh, one year, because uh, in fact the ESR will have been allocated through the African Development Bank and the money will flow on the countries. So many thanks to all of you.